Hi folks, and thank you for joining me for another episode of my easy, delicious meals at home. You can adjust the ingredients for two or three servings. You only need what you see on the screen for this recipe. The first step to making this delicious dish is to prepare your vegetables. You will need some onions, carrots, swede and potatoes. You can see how to peel them on the screen. After that, you need to cut them into rough chunks, which means not too small or too big. This will help them cook evenly and absorb the flavors of the casserole. To prepare the next step, cut the roast pork loin into bite-sized pieces. First, use a sharp knife to slice off a thick piece of meat from the roast, about 1 inch thick. Then, remove any excess fat from the edges of the slice with a smaller knife or kitchen scissors, and cut the piece into smaller chunks, about half an inch square. You should have enough meat for two servings. Set aside the pork chunks in a bowl until needed. To prepare the rice pot with vegetables and roast pork, you need to arrange the ingredients. First, you need to spread a layer of chopped onions and chopped carrots over the bottom of the pot. Then, you need to add a layer of roast pork pieces on top of the onion and carrot layer. Next, you need to cover the roast pork layer with a layer of diced sweet. Finally, you need to top everything with a layer of chopped potato. One of the secrets to making a tasty and satisfying casserole is to season it well during prepping. Adding salt, pepper and herbs to your ingredients in the pot will enhance their flavors and create a satisfying meal. A casserole dish is an excellent option for busy days, as you can prepare it ahead of time, and use the slow cooker function so it's ready to eat when you want. It is also easy to serve. You can spoon it into portions and enjoy it with a salad or bread. To enhance the taste and texture of the casserole, I add a tablespoon of dried sage and onion stuffing, for added flavor and thickness. The next step in our recipe is to add flavor to our dish by pouring two and a half cups of chicken stock into the cooking pot. It adds a rich and savory taste to our dish, as well as helping to cook the ingredients and create a gravy. Make sure to measure the chicken stock carefully and use a low sodium variety if you prefer less salt in your food. It is important to combine all the ingredients to ensure a uniform flavor and texture throughout the dish. Use a large spoon or spatula to stir the ingredients in a folding motion, not forgetting the sides and bottom of the pot as you go, making sure to distribute the seasoning and herbs evenly. To make the casserole more delicious, I added a tablespoon of Henderson's relish as a flavor enhancer. This is a spicy table sauce that originated in Sheffield, England, and has been produced since 1885, it adds a rich umami taste to the dish. Henderson's relish is also suitable for vegetarians and vegans and can be used in many other recipes. Amazon sells it online if you can't find it in your supermarket. As an alternative, try Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. One of the ingredients that you should not forget is garlic granules. They add a nice aroma and a subtle spiciness to your food. To ensure you don't miss them, add half a teaspoon of granules after adding the other spices. This will enhance the taste and make your dish more delicious. You are almost done with your casserole. You have chopped, mixed, and seasoned all the ingredients according to the recipe. The next step is to cook them using the rice cooker. Carefully transfer the pot with the casserole ingredients into the cooker. Make sure to wipe the bottom of the pot. Close the lid securely, plug in, switch on. Select the slow cooker menu on the control panel and adjust the timer to two and a half hours. Press the start button and wait for the rice cooker to beep when it is done. After cooking for two and a half hours, our delicious casserole is ready to be served. To ensure that the flavors are well distributed, we need to stir everything gently and thoroughly, from the bottom of the pot. Please use oven mitts or a towel to handle the pot, as it is very hot and could cause burns. To make the casserole more creamy and rich, I'm adding a slurry of corn flour and water to the pot. This will help bind the gravy and prevent it from separating. After stirring well, leave the casserole in the rice cooker and let it rest for a few minutes. This will allow the corn flour to cook and lose its raw taste, as well as thicken the sauce further. Our casserole is ready to be enjoyed. We need to transfer it carefully from the pot to a warm bowl. 
The pot has been in the rice cooker for a long time, so it will be very hot. You should wear oven mitts or use a towel around your hands to avoid getting burned. We have almost finished. The only thing left to do is to sprinkle a little bit of parsley on top, to give it some color and freshness. Just a few chopped leaves are enough to make all the difference. And now for the taste test time. This looks absolutely delicious. Let's give it a go. Ooh, it's hot. Mm. Potatoes are cooked. There's plenty of flavour. It really is nice. And considering it's a all in one pot, you know, what um, what we have in the cupboard is what we're using. Well, this is really nice. I'm gonna have some more. This is my tea, folks. Absolutely lovely. Wow. I think that is a job well done. For a quick easy tea, it's a chilly night, and that has all the flavours of a nice meal. Yes, very nice indeed. Two and a half hours to cook, 40 minutes to prep, it's, it's really nice. Lovely.